simple extraction. They were waiting for me. What was waiting for me was barely human. It tore the back off my car. Grow a spine, Solo. Hello, and welcome to Film Rant. This time we review The Man from Uncle, directed by Guy Ritchie. I'll apologise in advance if my voice sounds a bit weird because I've managed to get a cold in August somehow. But anyway, I was completely uninterested in seeing this movie because the marketing made it look like a really terrible James Bond copycat, but I have an unlimited cinema card, so I thought why the hell not, and I'm happy to say it was far from that. As usual, this review will contain spoilers, so start off to the cinema and watch it if you haven't already, or continue watching to be entertained by my glorious video for the next 15 minutes or so. We'll start off with the characters. Superman plays Han... I mean, Napoleon Solo. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue as got his hand solo, does it? Oh well. The first thing I noticed about Solo was the way he talks. It's just very bizarre. I went into this flick expecting him to sound like a suave American Bond, but instead I got Douglas Renham from the IT crowd. Ladies, listen. No one can mistake me for Gok Wan. <laughs> I have an old fashioned mindset, but damn it, at least I try. And Renham Industries is changing, ladies, for the better. The glass ceiling is now a glass floor. The women are floating above it, and the men are just looking up at them. Seriously, that's how he talks in this film. It really threw me off at first, but I have to say by the end it grew on me. There's a reason for why it grew on me, but I'll get to that later. While he talks like Douglas Renham, he is actually a suave American Bond-style character, but done badly. He has the gift of patter, he remains totally calm in mental situations, and he obviously fills out a suit as good as Barney Stinson. Henry Cavill is such a weird guy to look at though. He somehow just has this perfect western male face. It's actually like some expert female sculptors, who also turned out to be witches, crafted a perfectly chiselled sculpture of their ideal man and brought it to life through some dark magic. In fact, I'm not even sure if this statue in Batman vs Superman isn't just Henry Cavill in grey paint. Anyway. Yeah, he's like Bond, but a comical Bond. He's always making jokes and like his voice, it really threw me off that he was like this. Ilya, his Russian counterpart, played by Army Hammer, is also similar. He's introduced as this massive hench brute who's relentlessly chasing Solo, typical secret agent style stuff. But when he's introduced fully, he's actually the funnier of the two. His facial expressions and dialogue at times are surprisingly funny. I liked how they didn't use any stereotypes for his character either. He also has this trait where he can increasingly get angry and lash out. There's parts where the film focuses on this in a really, really cool way. More on that later though. Elia has the plotline of pretending to be the fiancé of Gabby, who is equally as funny as the male leads. Her remarks are equally as witty and her chemistry with Elia is a joy to watch. She's introduced as a car mechanic, and the audience, or me at least, never suspected that she was anything more than that. When the twist came that she was actually a British agent working undercover, it came as a nice surprise. My only fault with her is that I feel she's not in the film enough. The movie focuses on Solo and Elia a lot, but I feel it would have been better if it focused on the three of them as a trio. Our sexy villain this time is Victoria Vinciguerra, played by Elizabeth de Becky. That was fucking hard to say. For a villain, she wasn't in the film that much either. She has a handful of scenes and she's great in all of them. She's a truly twisted and ruthless individual, and when we are introduced to her we don't really expect her to be this way. So when she's doing all of her evil do-gooder stuff it was quite a nice surprise. My flaw with her though comes in that I'm not sure what her motive was. I think it was something to do with having the monopoly on the best nukes on the planet and selling them to the highest bidder. I think that's right, but when I watched the movie I didn't get her motive 100%. You certainly can't criticise the man from Uncle for its female characters. They're both very powerful women, and both are a true threat. So much so that they really give the male leads a run for their money. Well done, Mr. Ritchie. Now we'll discuss the script. The man from Uncle's biggest, and I mean huge, monumental fault, is that it can't decide what it wants to be. The film is based from a 60s spy-fi TV show of the same name. I've never seen the show, so I've no idea what the tone of it is, but the Man From U.N.C.L.E. movie can't decide if it wants to be Johnny English or James Bond. It's perfectly fine to do a film like Bond, with the odd comedic element here and there, in fact I'd encourage that. Seriously, spy films need a bit of comedy here and there, it's quite charming when done right, and that's what's so great about Bond. But The Man From U.N.C.L.E. pretty much has some comedic element in absolutely every scene. Some of it is witty comments, some of it is childish comedy, and some of it is visual comedy. So I went into this film expecting it to be a Bond ripoff, so when all of this ridiculous comedy is coming my way I was very confused. I thought it had totally missed the mark on being a serious spy flick. 
Eventually, I just let it in and accepted that this was meant to be a light-hearted comedy-style spy film. That's when Cavill's weird voice started to grow on me. Okay, I get it now, I thought. But then comes a torture scene in which the torturer shows Solo photos of his previous work. He gives a very long monologue about being different as a child and basically explains why he's an evil some bitch. So now I'm left thinking, that's a bit dark for a spy spoof style film isn't it? Shortly after that scene there's a great comedy gag where the tables turn and the torturer ends up in the chair. The electric chair has some wiring faults which Ilya fixes. Ilya and Solo leave the room and discuss whether they let him live or kill him. Meanwhile, in the background, we see him catch fire and burn to death. It was great comedy, seeing Solo and Elia have a lengthy discussion about what to do and the audience having a big, he's behind you, moment. The Man From U.N.C.L.E. changes tones too much. It is literally slap bang in the middle of being a spoof and being serious, and it ultimately doesn't really work. Richie needed to decide to go one way or the other. If he had, then The Man From U.N.C.L.E. would really be gaining a lot more attention than it is, because it's really, really well made from a technical standpoint. While it does skirt the line a little too much, a lot of the comedy in The Man From U.N.C.L.E. is nothing short of brilliant. There's a great scene where Solo and Ilya are trying to escape some guards on a speedboat. Ilya makes a crazy turn and Solo flies into the water. He swims ashore and finds himself in a truck. In this truck is a small hamper with cheese, grapes and scotch or whiskey or some other classy alcoholic beverage. The film then cuts from Solo enjoying his nice poncy meal, sitting safe as houses in a truck, and Ilya avoiding gunfire and explosions on his speedboat. We never get a close-up of Ilya though, we see it all from Solo's viewpoint. One shot shows Ilya speeding past in the truck's side mirror. It was a very stylish and well-executed scene, but I think it may have been a little funnier if it cut to close-ups of Ilya with loud gunfire in the background, and then cut back to the silent cavil in the truck. That would have added an element of audio comedy to it, but it was still a great scene nevertheless. Cavill and Hammer, which actually sounds like a really good like 70s cop show or something, have absolutely fantastic chemistry on screen. It ends up being like a buddy cop film when we see them converse. They both try to out banter each other to become the next Bantasaurus Rex or the Archbishop of Banterbury. I could go on and on with these banter puns by the way, but I won't. But yeah, their relationship is as enjoyable to watch as Peralta and Boyle from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, or Seth Rogen and Bill Hader and Superbad. It was totally unexpected for me. I thought they'd be dysfunctional and add each other's thoughts the whole movie, but instead, Richie exploits their dysfunctionality and turns it into a great buddy cop style comedy, and Cavill and Hammer absolutely nail it. One thing I did enjoy about this movie was that for a spy film, it didn't have too many plot twists. One of my main criticisms for Mission Impossible Rogue Nation was that it contained a little too many turns for me, and at times I couldn't keep up. The Man From U.N.C.L.E. is very straightforward. It does have a couple of twists, but both are perfectly logical, but still unexpected. Some spy films feel like they need to really contort and stretch the plot in order to make the film interesting. Sometimes it works really well. Sometimes it's just plain annoying. I'm very happy that this movie kept to a relatively straightforward plot. It allowed you to just relax and sink into the action and glorious on-screen camaraderie between Cavill and Hammer. Ilya and Gabby are constantly flirting throughout the film and you get the sense they'll bum uglies at the end. There's about four times in the film where they nearly kiss but are interrupted by something. Every time you're thinking, well, this'll be the one. And it never is. Even at the end, they still don't end up banging. So in this case, the hero didn't get the girl, in a way. I think she would have a fond love his rhythm stick, but it never actually happens. I'd love to see a spy film where the female just simply isn't interested in the hero. That could be a laugh. Now we'll get on to the technical parts of the film. This section is slightly bigger for this movie simply because it's so brilliantly well made. I'll start with the editing. James Herbert is the editor on this movie, and you, sir, have done a fucking fantastic job. The editing is absolutely sublime. There's a scene that introduces you to what you think will be the climactic scene where Solo and Ilya are going to infiltrate a fortress in order to rescue Gabby and her father, who is the scientist behind the nuke the villains want. Instead of going in literally guns blazing and doing a straight up action scene, like in Captain America, it instead shows Superman and his Russian mate fighting their way into the fortress in a comic book style. The screen is filled with different panels of action and flicks between them beautifully and seamlessly. The movie also incorporates the music brilliantly too. A section that comes to mind is when Victoria suspects Solo of being the thief that stole from her vault. As she is marching to his room there is ominous music playing. When she gets to the door she shushes her guards and when she says psh, the music cuts and she bursts in the door. It's a very little thing but it just adds a touch of class and finesse to the film. Similarly, there's a wonderful motif where when Ilya gets angry, man with a harmonica swells in the background. 
Whenever you hear that piece of music you associate it with his anger. Again, it's small, but it's a lovely little touch. Shit like that gets me erect. The Man From U.N.C.L.E. is a beautiful looking film too. John Matheson, who shot Gladiator, was the cinematographer on this, and yet again he does a stellar job. His shot composition is gorgeous, as is the camera movement, but his biggest accolade has to be the lighting. There are some fantastically lit shots in this movie. Take this one for example. This is the main shot that made me think it would be a Bond ripoff, and this shot literally does rip off Daniel Craig's Bond in this shot, but that doesn't stop it looking fucking mesmerisingly good. On that note, I want to address what I thought would be my main issue with this movie, that it was going to be a shit attempt at a James Bond style movie. But The Man From U.N.C.L.E. borrows a lot from Bond, but does so in a way that it doesn't come across as a copycat, more a gentle nod in Bond's direction. As I mentioned, we have that shot with Henry Cavill. The gun too is also similar, if not the same to Bond's. The women are visually presented similar to Bond girls, and Solo's one-liners are on par with some of Bond's. I'm perfectly fine with movies being influenced by other, similar, successful movies. It's when they try and copy it poorly that it really grinds my gears. I'll happily say though that this film doesn't do this, and I really enjoyed it as a result. I'll touch again on the editing and say that the film is really fast-paced. It has a runtime of two hours and is literally never boring. It barely ever slows down for long dialogues between the characters for character development or insight. Instead, it has the characters talk to each other in the middle of fights. It blends action and what would normally be quieter moments into a perfect concoction of action and unravelling character arcs. It's very hard for films to pull this off. Usually it'd have all the action scenes scattered throughout the movie and the rest spent in hotel rooms or mission HQs where the characters converse. This movie never holds up on the action, there's nearly always something going on, and I loved watching it. The Man From U.N.C.L.E. is a thoroughly entertaining movie. However, I'll end by saying I really wanted to be impressed by this film. It has elements that are in other films I absolutely worship, but there's just something missing from this that stops it being one of the greatest spy flicks around. I can't even put my finger on what it is. Maybe they just marketed it wrong. As I've said, from the marketing I got the impression it was like a Bond film, but what I got was a straight split of spoof and serious spy action. Fucking hell, I need to make these reviews easier to read. Maybe that's what's holding it back. It is a really big flaw that it doesn't know what it wants to be, and I think that if it did eventually decide, one way or the other, Guy Ritchie could have made something truly remarkable. The Man From U.N.C.L.E. gets 4 frames out of 5. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Film Rant. Turn the back off my car. Grow a spine, Solo.